My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. Today, we will talk about movements, which are the last remaining piece that we need to introduce before um, being able to program some enemies. So, um, movements are what allows you to move, of course, some objects. Um, what can be moved with movements is um, a lot of things actually. Um, entities from the map like um, enemies, like NPCs, or any dynamic entity. You can also move a treasure chest even though it's probably <laughs> not often what you want. Um, but basically anything that has coordinates at runtime. Um, <coughs> you can even move some sprites or some surfaces that are not um, in yeah that are not map entities. For example, these HUD icons here they are surface surfaces. Uh, same with the, the heart sprites here or the rupee counter, which is a text surface. But um, and you can also move um, directly some. Lua objects which represent uh, coordinates, so an, an X, Y table. But uh, in this first tutorial, we will only move um, entities of the map, so things that are that have map coordinates, like um, this character here. Um, okay, so let's start with the basic example. You will need, as usual, the Lua documentation, because for movements everything is in Lua. There is not really any uh, movement field here. Maybe one day there, there will, but it's simple enough to do in, in Lua, as you will see. So we have this page here, movements. There is one general type of movement, uh, which is described on, on this page, and then nine subtypes. Uh, which represents the kind of movement of movement that you want. Um, let's start with random path movement because it's probably one of the easiest ones to to create and to use. So to create a movement, um, no matter its type, you always call sol.movement.create and then you uh, indicate which movement type you want. So we'll call this with random path uh, parameter. And this will return an object of type movement, which then we can use. And we will call the start function. So let's do just that. We want to create a movement for this uh, Doc Emmett Brown NPC as soon as the map is started. So it will be in the unstarted event. So we create a variable, I will call it movement. Sol.movement.create um, random path. And then we will just start our movement object on which object? On um, doc here. We will call him call him doc. And that's it. We can already test this. And as you see, he is indeed moving with a random path movement. And yeah, okay, he just entered this door. Probably we don't want NPCs to go to other rooms. So um, it's a bit off topic, but let's do an invisible wall that we place here and say that it's not an obstacle for the hero, but it is for um, most of the things, in particular NPCs and enemies. And another one here and another one here. Okay, 
So basically one for each door. Okay. Um, so when he's moving, we can still talk to him um, because it had a dialogue assigned um, here. Um, something important with non-playing characters is that if they have the subtype usual NPC somebody, then they will have this uh, automatic behavior of taking the walking animation whenever they have a movement. So maybe you didn't notice, but his arms are moving here. So there is a sprite animation. And the second thing is that the sprite automatically takes the direction of the movement. And these two things would not happen if the subtype was generalized NPC. So generalized NPC would be used for any kind of interactive object that is not really uh, a person. And then there is absolutely no automatic behavior. It just takes the movement that we, that we scripted, but the sprite will not take any animation or any direction um, automatically. So if you want something to happen with the sprite, you, you would have to script it this time. Okay, so back to usual NPC in this case. Um, okay, so in this example, we we used random path movement. Movement. All types of movements have all these uh, functions available. In particular, there is um, ignore suspend. That is interesting. Like for timers, it's it's very similar. We can decide if the movement should stop when the game is paused, when the game is suspended by, by a dialogue or by the pause menu. So if I pause the game by pressing D, here the movement is stopped, is suspended. Okay? If you don't want that to happen, Maybe let's say you are in a cutscene, some character, I mean, there is some dialogue active, the game is suspended, the hero cannot move, the enemies cannot move, but you want your NPC to move during the cutscene, you can still force, force the NPC, force the movement to ignore the fact that the game is suspended. So set ignore suspend true. And now if I press D, OK, the movement continues. But the animation is stopped. So it's a bit tricky because the, the sprite also needs the ignore suspend setting. So we haven't seen the, the sprite API yet, but you can find it in the drawable object section. Sprites are one example of drawable object, and they also have this function set ignore suspend. Um, by the way, it's also possible to apply movement directly on a sprite, which is especially useful if you want to move something that is that does not belong to the map, so that is not a, a map entity with coordinates with map coordinates, but something that would that is maybe directly drawn on the screen like the hearts here i don't know if you want to move them or something in your pause menu um anyway i wanted to test this set in or suspend okay now the game is paused and <laughs> it's hard to see but the game is paused and uh doc is still moving and his sprite is still animated Um, yeah, there is no pause menu yet, but we will do one later, another day. Okay, let's remove these instructions. We probably don't want to to ignore when the game is suspended. 
Um, okay, we can also see said ignore obstacles. Let, let's try another type of mov movement here um, first. Maybe a target movement because it's very useful for enemies. So the target movement will uh, run towards the hero. And here it's very fast. It's probably too fast. But you can change the speed if you go to target movement. There is set speed here. Set speed. And the speed is in pixels per second. So let's try 40. That's more reasonable. Okay, so target movements are useful, especially for enemies. You can specify the target. By default, it will target the, the hero, but it, it can be anything. The target can be either an entity or of some fix, fixed coordinates, as you want. Um, let's uh, now try straight movement, which is um, yeah, just a, a straight line with some speed and some angle. The, the angle is in radians. And zero is right. Uh, pi over two is um, up, and pi is left, and so on. So if you if you want to go left, it's it's pi. So math dot pi here in Lua, and it's going left, and it will stop because of the wall. But did you notice that before hitting the wall, he was um, almost stuck here because there is this obstacle. But he did that. He he automatically adjusted his uh, position eight pixels more to the to the north, and then he continued his movement. Let's see that again. Boom. So that happened because by default the movement is what we call um, smooth. Um, there is this property here, is smooth and set smooth. If you say movement set smooth false, this time doc will just stop Uh, as soon as the obstacle is reached, it will not try to to adjust his position. And by the way, this also exists for the hero. When you try to get, go through a door, you are usually not perfectly, exactly aligned, uh, pixel precise, you know. But here I'm like one or two pixels too much to the right, but the engine automatically adjusted this. It's because the movement of the hero is also uh, smooth. Um, yeah, okay. So there are a lot of other uh, movement types and a lot of properties for these movement types, but the usual pattern is to create your movement for some type, set all its properties, and then start your movement on the object that you want to move. Um, there is also max distance, which is interesting. Now let's let's talk first about um, back to the general movement page. Um, oh yeah, ignore obstacles. You can say that your movement will just don't care about any obstacles, so it will be able to traverse 
things. Like the door, that, like if the table or the wall did not exist. So I don't know if you are, if your entity is a bird or something that flies, or a ghost, <laughs> maybe that can be useful. Um, yeah, I also wanted to, as another example, to talk about set max distance. You can say that your movement should stop after, let's say, 64 pixels. Um, okay, 64 pixels must correspond to the distance between the NPC and the table, so that's a very bad example. Let's say 32, to really make sure that it's, he stops because of the max distance and not because of the table. Okay, it worked. He just stopped. Um, and it's possible to do something when the movement is finished. And to do that, you can, you could use the movement unfinished event, but there is a simpler way. You can pass a callback, very similarly to uh, dialogues and timers. So things that we saw previously, but we still have them just here. This is a callback for the game start dialog function, and this one is a callback for this uh, timer. Um, so let's say we want to show the dialogue, but only after the movement is finished and the dialogue is... I don't want to create a new dialogue, I will just show the same here. Doctor.hello. So he's moving and when the movement is finished, the dialogue is shown. This kind of callbacks can be very useful for cutscenes. You do some movements, and then you start a dialogue, and then maybe a timer, and then something else, and so on and so on. Um, so again, we call this function. It starts the movement. And this one, this code here, will be called only later when the movement finishes. But the start function here, it returns immediately. It doesn't. It does not wait for the for the end of the of the movement. Okay. Um, I think that's all I wanted to talk about. You can read the documentation to know more about the various types of movements. Uh, the the most useful is probably straight movement because. You can recreate most of the other ones uh, based on the straight movements. For example, the random path movement, the first one that we saw, is it's just it's really essentially just a straight movement with some code that will change the the angle from time to time. Um, okay, so as always, if you have any question. Um, please join our Discord and we will help. Thank you all for watching this tutorial. Uh, and that's all for now. Bye.